Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you the correct and safest way to repair an extension cord that's been damaged. Let's get started. So as you can see, this extension cord has been damaged pretty badly. It got caught in the teeth of a hedge trimmer that my neighbor was using to trim her edges and it flipped her breaker and shorted out a little bit, but this can be repaired and it's a really pretty simple process. Now there's lots of other videos on how to repair these things, but many of them show you a pretty unsafe way to do it, including things like using wire nuts or butt connectors. And while those can work as a temporary kind of a fix, the way I'm gonna show you to fix it today is really the right way to do it. But you are gonna need a couple of tools and a couple of supplies. First off, you're gonna to have to have a soldering iron to do this repair properly. Now a soldering iron can be a little bit intimidating, but they're not very expensive and they're really quite easy to use. You can find them at your local hardware store or online at Amazon or other retailers. I think this one cost about $15 and it came with a whole bunch of accessories. So if you don't already have a soldering iron, this kind of a project would be the perfect excuse to go ahead and invest in one. You're also gonna need a couple of different sizes of heat shrink. This larger size here will replace the outer insulation on the wire. And I've got a variety of other sizes here in this package. You don't have to get a whole big package like this. You can just get the smaller diameter in a smaller amount to use to replace the insulation on the inner wire. Let's get into the repair and I'll show you exactly how it's used. So before we can get started, we need to inspect the damage and decide if it can actually be repaired. The first thing that you'll need to make sure of is that you've got several inches on either side of the damaged area as we're gonna be stripping back this insulation and repairing the broken connections inside there. If this repair needed to happen, say, really close to the end near the plug, say the damage was about here, you may not have enough distance. And in that case, you just cut off the end and replace the end connector. We're not gonna cover that in this video, but if you're interested in seeing how to replace one of the end connectors, either the male or the female side, let me know down in the comments and I'll do a video on that as well. So in this case, we've got plenty of area. Let's get started. I'm gonna use a pair of wire cutters and I'm gonna cut out the damaged area, starting a few centimeters on either side of it. This makes sure we've cut out all of the damaged area. Yeah, we're gonna just throw this away. Next, we're gonna use a razor blade like this to very carefully cut back about an inch and a half or so of the outer insulation. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna use very light pressure and only just barely score the outer insulation. Mainly, you don't wanna cut through the insulation of the wiring that's on the inside of this wire. Once you've scored it, you should be able to just pull the insulation apart and remove the outer sheath of insulation exposing the inner wires. Go ahead and do this to both sides. Next, we need to strip off about a half inch or so of the insulation on these inner wires. If you don't have wire strippers like this, you can do the same kind of technique where you cut it very slightly with the razor blade, but just be very careful you don't cut the actual copper inside the wiring. Now, I am notorious for forgetting about the heat shrink at this point. So before you go any farther, before you think about soldering anything at all, don't forget to put the heat shrink, especially the larger one, on the outer wire. To put on the heat shrink, all you do is feed it onto the outer sheath and slide it down and out of your way. We'll need this installed here in our last step, so anything that you do from here on out, if you've forgotten to put this on now, you'll have to undo everything and redo the repair later. Similarly, we have to remember to put the heat shrink on the inner wires as well. Now this is gonna be too long of a piece, and it doesn't have to be very long. It only needs to overlap the area of the repair. So I'm gonna cut this into thirds about, which should be just about the right size. And we'll slide one onto each wire. Okay, now we can twist these ends so that they are a little easier to work with. We're just twisting them into a quick spiral against themselves. And then make sure you're connecting black to black, green to green, and white to white. And rather than connecting them like this, if you connect them like that, then this will have a tendency to wanna stick up from the side of your wire and get in the way all the time. So don't twist them together like this. That's gonna wind up sticking up and never really laying flat on your wire. Instead, we're gonna wrap them together and around each other so that the wrapping allows the wiring to lay flat, just like that. And as soon as I've got the first one wrapped like this, I'm gonna go ahead and solder it. Now I know soldering can seem a little daunting, but it's really not that hard. 
especially for a connection like this. Just make sure that you get plenty of solder and that it completely saturates both ends of the wire that you're soldering. With the first one finished, I can work on the next one. That's two down, one more to go. Now we can use our heat gun to shrink this heat shrink around the outside of those connections. Now if you don't have a heat gun, you can try and use something else like a lighter to get these to shrink. Though really it's not recommended. They will burn really easily if you're not super careful. So I do recommend getting a heat gun. And if you're ever gonna repair more than one thing, buying a heat gun really is worth the investment. They're really not that expensive. And finally, we can slide that big piece of heat shrink that we prepared earlier on the outside and put that over our repair area and use the heat gun again to shrink it down. And with that, the repair is finished and we can test the extension cord. All right, we're gonna return to the scene of the crime for this testing. Get that plugged in. There we go. All right, sweet, it works. As you can see, this is a really simple repair. If you uh, thought this video was useful at all, I'd really appreciate a quick little thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can think about subscribing, but of course there's no pressure there. But as always, thank you very much for watching.